This video is to inform the user how to burn to a CD or other removable media. This video was recorded on CubeView version 2809. Most of these features are available in earlier versions of CubeView as well. If you look at the uppermost toolbar, you'll see starting from the left we have the Systems tab, which is where you'll change settings. The Patient list, this is the default view, what we're looking at right now. The Review tab is where the images created by QView will appear. And the Media Export tab, any images or DICOM data sets that we create or want to burn to a CD will be found here in the Media Export tab once we have selected them. There are several different types of data that can be burned to the CD. For example, the reconstructed data or recon data is the entire DICOM data set, in this case 532 DICOM slices. Any screen image that we have also created can be burned to the CD. The raw data, if it's there and if it's desired. We can also create and save JPEGs as well. To do that, go to the Review tab, Save. Save screen as JPEG will save all four images. When we save it to the patient folder, it's going to be stored in the database along with the DICOM images. You will not be able to view it in QView because QView only opens DICOM data, but we will have access to it and we will be able to select images created when we go to the media export folder. So for now we're going to save the screen image, which is again all four of the images that are visible to the patient folder. I'm also going to click on a particular image and save that as JPEG as well. We can also create a 3D frame sequence rotating in the X, Y, or Z direction. And when we go back to the patient list, we see now that a series of images has been created. All of these are available to export using the Media Export tab. To start the process, we're going to go to Reconstructed Data. We're going to right-click using the right mouse button, and we're going to select Media Export. It's going to place a copy of this available in the Media Export tab. We can also select any one of the screen images that we have created. I'm going to right-click and select this one for media export as well. And also right-click and select this screen series for media export as well. When we go to the media export tab, we are going to see the patient name. And this will be the entire Axial data set. We are also going to see the series of 3D frame sequences. This is the JPEG that has been saved and two other JPEGs that were also saved individually. We have now selected the images that we want to burn to the CD, including these JPEGs. If for some reason we don't want to save these JPEGs and burn them to the CD, we can remove the check mark. The images will still be there, they'll be saved in the patient data folder, but they will not be burned to the CD if they're not checked. Before we actually burn the CD or DVD, let's make sure that we have all of the images that we want. If we wanted to, we could add an additional series, such as a second or even third patient data set. However, I would caution against mixing up more than one patient on the same CD or DVD, especially if you intend to give a copy to the patient. If you look at these images and you see that more than one patient is present, because the previous person to burn a CD had not cleared everything out, what you need to do is reset the export structure. By clicking that and saying yes, you remove all of the patient data that has been selected. You would then have to go back to the patient list and select the images again. So quickly selecting the patient data, again, recon to media export. You're going to select a screen capture again. We're also going to select a 3D frame sequence. And remember, those JPEGs will automatically appear. Any JPEG that was saved to the patient data folder. Going to media export, we see that is the case. If we don't want to burn them, we can simply remove the check mark. At this point, we're ready to burn. Starting from the top, let's look at our options and also what is required. The first item we see here with a check mark in the box is Add Cube Installer. On the CD or DVD, we will add a copy of CubeView viewing software. 
Something to keep in mind is that the patient or doctor who is receiving this needs to have a 64-bit operating system, Windows 7 or higher. Again, Windows 7 or higher 64-bit operating system is required to use QView Installer. By removing the check mark, you save about 100 megabytes worth of data to be burned to the CD or DVD. Next is mandatory, you must type in a recipient's name. This could either be the doctor that you're sending it to, or you could also make it the patient's name as well. In this case, we're going to type in John Doe. Again, you must add something to the recipient field, otherwise you will not be allowed to complete the CD burn process. Next, we have to select one of these two options, output to media burner or output to folder. If we output to media burner, everything that's visible, everything that we have selected, will go to a temporary folder that is associated with the Windows media burner that is installed on this computer. Again, you must have Windows media burner installed on the computer as well, and you must be able to insert a writable CD or DVD. If you select output to folder, then you can either select a folder you have previously created or create a folder into which all of this data will go. In this case, we're going to select Media Burner, placing a check mark there. The next thing we're going to do is prepare export. By clicking this, it's going to calculate how much space is needed, and this in turn will tell us do we need to use a CD or a DVD. Typically, a CD is going to be able to hold about 700 megabytes, and a DVD will be able to hold about 4.4 gigabytes. As we can see here, the total space required is 511.8 megabytes. That includes the QView installer. If I remove the check mark, prepare the export again, we can see we've taken off about 100 megabytes. Before we proceed to the actual burning, just a quick reminder, if you have checked the box to add QView Installer to the CD or DVD, the person receiving these images and QView must have Windows 7 or higher and a 64-bit operating system. 32-bit operating systems will not allow the installation and operation of QView software. If you are in a large institution where they have a PAX environment and you have a PAX CD burner, you can use that instead. Also something to keep in mind is if you would like to be able to have control over 3D rendering within QB software, you must have a license in order to use the 3D rendering part of QB software. In order to obtain that license, please contact Curvebeam Customer Support. All of the other functionality will be available to you except for the 3D rendering. That requires a license. If we are ready to burn, at this point we're going to click on the export button here. You now have files waiting to be burned to disk will appear down in the lower right hand corner. Clicking on this balloon, we are now looking at a temporary folder that is associated with the Windows CD or DVD burning program. If by chance you have not acted quickly enough and clicked on the balloon as it appeared in the lower right hand corner, just go to start computer and then select your DVD burning drive. You will then see all of the temporary files that are waiting to be burned. The last step at this point is to make sure that you have a CD or DVD inserted into the drive on your computer and then click on burn to disk. In this case we see uh, there is no disk in the CD or DVD burner. Please make sure to insert a disk then at that point you would click on next and the contents would then be burned to the CD or DVD. Once you are done burning, I would advise you to clean up after yourself, delete any temporary files that may be here, and then going back to QView software as well, reset the export structure. This way there's less chance that you will mix up two different sets of patient data. The last step in the cleanup process is to go up to the recipient box and make sure you remove the name of the recipient that you have typed in there. Just in case the next person comes along and doesn't change it, you want to make sure that you're not mixing up patient information. This video was recorded using QView version 2809. 
If you would like to upgrade to 2809 or the current version of QView, be sure to contact Curvebeam customer or technical support. Upgrades are done by appointment and they will also assist you in the installation of the newest versions of QView.